About seven months ago, I did a review on the original ROG Ally. And in that video, I just wasn't the biggest fan when it came to the ROG Ally. The biggest issue being that the battery was not that great. Typically, I was getting about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on the game, and that was really bothering me. When it comes to a handheld, battery life is pretty important, and the bare minimum I'm expecting is three hours of battery. And I think that's part of it is because the original Nintendo Switch had about three hours of battery life, depending on the game that you played. Fast forward to June 2024, and the ROG Ally X was announced, and one of the key features that stood out to me was the battery. The battery was now a lot bigger, double the size at that. And to me, it got me wondering, was this enough for me to go ahead and buy it and keep it? Or will I run into a similar issue? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Now, I'm not going to go into my overall thoughts on the original ROG Ally in this video. So if you want to go ahead and know what exactly am I talking about and what were my thoughts on the original ROG Ally, go ahead and watch the video. I will have it in the link in the description below. So you can go ahead and check that out. But for the rest of this video, it's going to be dedicated mainly to the ROG Ally X with minor comparisons between the two. The ROG Ally X, I feel, is more than a minor upgrade when you compare it to the original Ally. And to me, that's pretty big because when it comes to the handheld PC gaming space, I feel like they're still trying to figure out what is the best way to approach this. The original RG Ally definitely boasted a lot more powerful internals when you compare it to the Steam Deck, but on the flip side, had a pretty poor battery life. Where the Steam Deck was not as powerful, but you had a really good battery life, which was further improved when the Steam Deck OLED came out. Now with the RG Ally X, it did want to go ahead and not sacrifice that performance, but also give you a great battery life. But it did something a little bit more that the Steam Deck didn't do. And that is it actually upgraded the performance, but it's also $100 more. And is that enough for you to go ahead and pick this over the original RG Ally? I think so. The ROG Ally X is boasting 24 gigs of RAM versus the original 16 gigs of RAM. This gives you a lot more overhead when it comes to adding VRAM. VRAM is, of course, RAM that's used by the GPU. And it's nice to see that you can get 8 gigs of GPU RAM, not have to worry about sacrificing the rest of the device. And it's very noticeable because in a lot of games, I'm able to run these games at higher frame rates and also higher resolution without sacrificing any type of performance whatsoever. The other thing that it has is a bigger battery. It goes from a 40 watt hour battery life to an 80 watt hour battery. That is pretty huge because technically speaking, you should be getting double the battery life when it comes to this. And I can definitely say you get about double the battery, if not more. And I'm actually very impressed with how well it holds up. I was playing Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and I was actually very surprised at how long I was able to run. The RG Ally was at 50% battery and I was still able to play for about two hours. So if I was at a full charge, that would have put me at about four hours of battery runtime, which I was very, very impressed. And there is a weird thing going on when it comes to the Xbox like App Store, or I guess the Microsoft Store version of Black Ops 6. That is, I can't really go ahead and change the quality. It kind of has like a preset. You can choose performance or quality. Of course, I went and chose performance because that is something that you kind of need in a multiplayer game like that. But nonetheless, the game still looked really, really good and performed very, very well. When it comes to going ahead and have it off the power source running at 17 watts of performance mode, I was actually able to get over 60 FPS. Plugging it in got me about 96 FPS, so, you know, give or take, depending on what was going on in there. I was very, very actually excited to see this type of performance on this device. But like I said, the biggest thing that I was very surprised at was the battery life. From 50% getting two hours, that was 
surprising. I did not think it would be able to do that. I was actually kind of worried to go ahead and play this game, but I was able to go ahead and continue playing zombies and not have to worry about my battery dying. Now, Call of Duty was one of the games I did test when compared to the original ROG Ally, but that wasn't the only one. I did go ahead and play some Star Ocean, the Divine Force, and try to see the performance difference as well as the battery life difference. And sure enough, I am getting way better performance as well as better battery life when it comes to this game. There's one feature that was added, I wanna say maybe about a month after I returned my ROG Ally, that is actually contributing to better performance, and that is frame generation. The ROG Ally has an internal frame generation technique that allows you to go ahead and get that boosted performance, and it's very well noticeable. Star Ocean the Divine Force doesn't support it on the game level, but using the ROG Ally's internal frame generation, I am able to get 60 FPS consistently. I do have the resolution set to 720p, mainly because I do still want that better battery life. I haven't really tested it with 1080p, but for the little bit that I've kind of gone back and forth, it doesn't seem to be that noticeable, but I would need to do a little bit further testing to see if it's, it's very noticeable. Other games are seeing this boost in performance, such as Monster Hunter Stories 2. You're seeing a pretty big difference in performance when compared to the original ROG Ally. As well as Kingdom Hearts 3. I've been playing Kingdom Hearts 3 with frame generation turned on, getting a consistent 60 FPS, and honestly, it runs very, very well. Of course, when it comes to battery life, I'm getting well over three hours in both of those games that I mentioned. The other game I did test as well, which I did play on the ROG Ally, was Dragon Quest XI. And sure enough, I am getting amazing performance at high frame rates using both frame generation and of course having RSR turned on. All of this is set at 1080p and my battery life is still going very strong. I'm very impressed with these upgrades that the ROG Ally has. And honestly, the Ally X might very well be worth it for most people. One thing I won't be talking about in this video is emulation. I figured emulation would be about the same, just with better battery life. But if enough people want me to go ahead and dive deep into emulation, I will definitely make a separate video on how emulation works on the ROG Ally. Now with all these games that I played, I did mention that I did use RSR and frame generation on some of them, while others I did not. And there's something I do want you to understand. Frame generation is basically a technique that allows you to get higher frame rates. And it's kind of using, I guess for lack of better words, I want to say AI, but it's basically using the graphics card or your graphics chip to go ahead and get that extra frame rate. Think of it like FSR, but for frame rate. And it works very, very well. Now, of course, you might see a little bit of artifacting around the edges of, let's say, the characters or maybe like trees and things like that. And unfortunately, that is a side effect to frame generation. But for the most part, I will say, especially on a screen this small, it's not that noticeable. On most of the games that I've been playing, I don't really notice it that much, especially with games like Black Ops 6, which I am not noticing any of that ghosting or anything like that. But you might pick that up depending on how bright I guess you're playing it as, as well as how big of a screen you're playing. For example, if you're playing it on dock mode. But the neat thing about frame generation is it does give you a little bit more performance boost, which is nice because if a game doesn't really run that great, or maybe you just don't want it to run at 30 FPS, it does help you with reaching that 60 FPS frame limit. Games like Final Fantasy 16, which I did test it, works perfectly fine. Where on the Steam Deck OLED, even though there's an option for frame generation on there, it does not work properly. I actually get worse frame rates on that game versus with that shut off. But on the ROG Ally X, with frame generation turned on, I can easily get 60 FPS at 1080p. And honestly, you're still getting really good battery life. The downside of Final Fantasy 16, if you're thinking of picking up this, on the RG Ally X specifically, is that the game is just not well optimized on PC. I've been having a lot of issues, mainly when it comes to the cutscenes. The minute I get into a cutscene, unfortunately, it just starts to stutter. And after that, the game just continues to stutter. But if you are not in a cutscene or you don't see a cutscene for quite some time, you'll notice that the game runs very, very smooth. So until Square Enix fixes that, I don't recommend buying an RG Ally X just for Final Fantasy 16. I will admit that's kind of one of the reasons why I did pick up this ROG Ally X is I do want to finish Final Fantasy 16 in portable, in handheld, but unfortunately does not run that good. Honestly, the handheld having frame generation, I think it's a pretty big deal. 
and it's something that a lot of people should notice that it's actually pretty cool to have it does give you a little bit more performance out of these handhelds a little bit more i guess you can say smoothness when it comes to running these games and i do like that asus looked at this technique and decided to put it internally into the game now if you are using asus's built-in driver version of frame generation i will say it's hit and miss not every game will function correctly with this on so it's better that you prioritize the in-game frame generation over what asus has to offer very similar to like RSR versus FSR. If a game supports FSR, definitely use that. If it doesn't, try using RSR. RSR has been hit and miss when it comes to me. Some games don't support it well, while others do work very well with it. So I mentioned battery life and performance, but some of the other changes that this does have is the inclusion of another Thunderbolt port. This is pretty awesome because rather than have to use ASUS's proprietary XG mobile port, you can now finally use pretty much any external GPU dock and dock a GPU in there for dock mode. Of course, doing this will give you way better performance than what you already have, and the Z1 Extreme is a very well capable CPU. When you pair that with a really good GPU, you can honestly go well beyond the performance that it has internally. And I actually think that's pretty cool and pretty awesome because Thunderbolt docks are a lot easier to come by versus XG Mobile ports because the XG Mobile docks are they're ridiculous. They're very, very expensive. I mean, I believe the last one I saw was an older card. I want to say it was like a 2070, maybe a 2080. And it was well above $1,000, which is definitely not worth it. Being able to go ahead and use whatever GPU you want, finding the correct dock, and utilizing that is actually pretty awesome and a huge plus for ASUS. I'm very glad they, they went away from that proprietary technology and gave us something that's more universal. There's some other minor differences that you can see, such as the D-pad. The D-pad is actually a little bit better overall, in my opinion. The grooves where the directionals are are actually a little bit bigger and more solid. It has more of a matte finish versus the more plasticky feel that the older D-pad have. And I really do like that. It does make playing 2D side scrollers a lot easier overall. And I do like how they have that. Ergonomically as well, it is a little bit different. I don't know how I really feel about it because I will say this, it is a little bit heavier and I do have to take breaks or at least like, you know, kind of hold it in one hand to kind of give my other hand a rest and, you know, vice versa because it is pretty heavy and I feel like that on the edges of, on the bottom right edges and the bottom left edges of the RG Ally X kind of digs into your palms. Now, not everybody's going to feel this. Again, I have more like smaller size hands, so that might be a big deal for me. Maybe if you have bigger hands, it might not be as much of a big deal. I would feel that the Steam Deck OLED is still better ergonomically speaking, but overall, it's still a great feel and not that bad. It's definitely better than a Nintendo Switch for sure. Now, the back ones are also a little bit smaller as well, and they actually feel a little bit better. Again, that plasticky feel that the buttons had on the previous ROG Ally, it's pretty much gone. They're using more matte buttons or matte finishes for the buttons. And I prefer that over just that weird glossy look. Of course, these are plastic, but they're not glossy. So it just feels, I don't know, a little bit more premium, I guess I would say. The buttons feel a lot more premium compared to the previous version, which I really do like. Again, those buttons are a little bit smaller as well. And that is nice because you don't get the accidental presses. Now, with the original RG Ally, I didn't really have that issue, but I know some people did. But I do like that they're a little bit smaller, so they're a little bit out of the way, so you can go ahead and not have to worry about accidentally pressing those buttons. Another thing to mention is the setup process seems a little bit more streamlined, I would say. When I originally set up the ROG Ally, the first one, I would say that I had to go ahead and do all the Windows 11 updates. Then after that, I had to open up Armory Crate and go ahead and do those updates, and then go ahead and do the ASUS updates. From here, it did the Windows 11 updates and then booted it into Windows and automatically started doing the ROG Ally updates. I do like that a lot more because it seems a little bit more streamlined. Now it's not the same setup process that you get with Steam Deck where it's pretty much straightforward and does everything in one go. There are still multiple updates you're doing on the ROG Ally X, but for the most part, it works. It's pretty good, a little bit more streamlined, and I think your average consumer will feel very, I don't know, I guess at home doing this or I don't know, it's more console like i guess for lack of better words but yeah overall i am very impressed with the rog ally x honestly it's exceeded my expectations i was not expecting it to be this good when it comes to just overall handhelds and gaming handhelds 
one of the biggest factors that I really look into is does it have Windows or not? And usually Windows is a big resource hog. Now there are of course a lot of benefits to Windows being that better compatibility when it comes to gaming. Also a lot of mods work better on Windows than it does on Linux. And there's other things like emulation for example. If you do an emulation, a lot of the mods on there also are only available on Windows and I was not able to get those on Linux. But when it comes to the RG Ally X, I think they're really trying to make up for the resource hogging and all that other stuff with more RAM and just a better battery life overall. And it does help out a lot. In my opinion, this puts it on par with the Steam Deck, if not even better. So far, I've only had this device for about two weeks, I would say. And honestly, I'm really feeling it. This has potential to replace the Steam Deck as the device I use every day. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I'll probably do an update video within a month or two to see how I feel as I go along with it. But as of right now, I'm really enjoying the ROG Ally X. And honestly, yeah, Asus has won me over. This is actually pretty awesome. I really do enjoy this device and I can't wait to continue using it. But let me know in the comment section below, what else do you want me to see do with this ROG Ally X? I am very curious and very interested in trying Bazite on this. If you don't know what that is, Bazite is basically a Linux distro that's kind of Steam OS, but modified so it can be used on the ROG Ally or ROG Ally X. And a lot of people have says that they pretty much like doing it that way. You do get a better, better battery life. Performance seems about very similar to what you would get overall but you do get a little bit better battery life. So I am kind of interested in trying this out. I might do it later on, maybe in a couple months, because I do have my other handhelds showing up and I'm definitely gonna go ahead and work on those reviews. But let me know what else you want me to talk about when it comes to the RG Ally X. Maybe eventually I'll also get a dock so I can test out desktop performance when it comes to that as well. Do you guys own an RG Ally X or were you thinking about it? If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer everybody's questions. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Really do appreciate everybody who joins me for all my videos as well as my live stream. I do live stream three times a week. Thursday and Fridays are typically my group stream and solo stream. And every Sunday we have the Random Encounter podcast where we pretty much talk about all the gaming news that happened that week. Thanks for watching. My name is James. I will catch you guys next time.